Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration. I finally got round to putting down some core miner drills. Here we go, I've got six of them here running running away merrily and um, and now just starting to back up. That's some good timing right there, isn't it? <laughs> so I um, I built this area up because somebody in, in, in the comments said, hey, you should be using core miners. And I thought, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Let's uh, let's have a, have a bit of a look into them. Um, and yeah, they, they're quite useful. They, they do dig up a lot of miscellaneous stuff as you can as you can see by these belts coming out here they're digging up lots of lots of different things so we've got stone and coal and copper and iron and vulcanite i think this red stuff is they also produce water and oil as well which is potentially well the oil well, the water's not so much use not so useful but the uh, the oil is potentially very useful so the way these work you've got these machines giant mach mining machines at the top and bottom of each of these rows and they spit out the um core chunks quite quickly like that as you see there and then they all manage to back up completely because this is a really bad time to show you how it all works um, and then we've got all the um, these pulverizers along here that will pick up those core chunks and then they'll uh, smash them up and turn them into these things now I'm quite glad I've already in a way I'm quite glad I've already played Angel Bobs because that means I'm sort of used to um, going in and sorting this sort of thing out uh, oh we've got a train picking up Yes, so the iron ore filled up all of the chests along here, so now trains come along to pick it up, and that's um, freeing things up again, so it's now starting to move again. So what I've got along here is I need to find a way of essentially splitting out all of the different um, products, so each one can go to a different station. So I've got the, uh, the red stuff here, I've got the uranium going here, and there's not very much of that, there's only like 750 of it, that's quite rare unfortunately, and so on all the way down. And each of these then, train can come along, pick it all up and take it off somewhere else. So, yeah, that, that works quite well. Um, it took me quite a lot of thinking to come up with a good way to do this. It, uh, I had a, a few um, major false starts with this, but essentially we've got the row of um, of the various different splitters, each one peeling off the um, the thing that you don't, the thing that you do want from that one. So the bottom one pulls out the um, the iron ore, then the copper ore, then the stone, coal, and so on. Uh, and, and yeah, it, it works quite well. For, for a single one, that's absolutely trivial. You feed in one belt, and it splits them all up, and then they all just pour out the other side. That very, very easy. When you then want to have several of them, because you've got lots of these going together, well, the first two are easy, because I just fed the two sides into the same splitter. Um, but then I thought, hang on, I need... I don't... I want to have several of these. I'm going to have six of these in total. How am I going to do that? And eventually I came up with this idea of feeding... For each one of these, I'd feed in the original the the same thing onto the other side of it so in theory if this was if this was running smoothly and the whole thing wasn't horrendously backed up then this would just pass straight through here and there'd be hopefully be some gaps in there where it, which would be filled up by these so that yeah that would that would should in theory run quite smoothly and and it actually does um, as you can see from all these other ones it's um we've got some copper about to come through here and that and from the other side and it all just flows through very smoothly and the um the other stuff the things that come out higher up again just get passed up the chain and that that's quite easily expandable as well. It works all the way back to here, and I can just I can make them all um, all run off whatever I, uh, whatever whatever um, ores that they're trying to deal with. Down here, I massively overspec this. I uh, when I, I, I looked at this and I and the, the sort of the re rate of resources that was expected to come out of them, and I thought it was going to be a significantly faster than it was, which is why there's red belts all the way around here. Um, I was expecting this to come out as a bit of a flood. Um, so yeah we've let's just say so this is over spec rather a lot i was um i don't need more i don't need all six of these on either side of this i don't i probably could get away with two or maybe four but you know it doesn't really matter Energy's cheap now uh the things are built they're, they're also fairly cheap to build and so eventually we'll yeah as you can see this this um backlog here is, is mostly gone this one's completely gone apart from the bit in the middle that it can't get at because the way the belts work uh this one is still mostly full and getting gradually filled up as well but you know that doesn't matter it'll the stuff is flowing through this one's going down that one will start to go down eventually and it'll all go into the station down here and, and there's a train gone off with some coal yes coal i think from that from the air uh, from, from the station here so most of it is getting through reasonably nicely one of the things i've done as you can see here is i've put a priority on all of these stations so in theory, that should mean that when my iron smelting system wants some iron ore, if there's enough in this station for it to come and get it, then it will. It'll prioritise this one and choose to come and get the come and get the iron ore from here rather than from any of the other stations. And that's important because this is the one that where if it fills up, as you saw at the beginning of the video, then it backlogs it and everything else starts to struggle. So 
I think this should continue to work. The only problem I'm having at the moment with it is with the water. Now I'm not using water anywhere so these tanks do just fill up over time. Um, that's why there's rather a lot more of them than there is of the oil tanks. Now I've been down here a couple of times and just emptied them manually which is a, a silly, bit of a silly thing to do really because it's a bit of a waste and, it's a, and it's, a, it's a manual intervention. And I've also put in this alarm pole down here, uh, programmable, excuse me, programmable speaker rather and that goes burp, 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 whenever the uh, when the uh, tank starts to fill up. So I know it's time to go and f uh, time to go and deal with it. It's exactly the same system as I've used over here in my depots with this red cable that runs down here into this speaker, this one. Um, and that one, if there's anything on there at all, then that means one of the trains has come back with stuff in its inventory, which it shouldn't do. And so the alarm will go off and. Tell it, and a train icon will flash telling me that I need to go over there and sort it out because something's gone screwy. So, yeah, that's, um, I'd say that's working pretty well. Um, the only downside of this is it's not actually producing that much stuff. Yeah, um, okay, it has backed up completely on the iron, as, as we saw. Um, so, maybe it is producing enough? What am I, what am I short of at the moment? Uh, let's have a look. Stone and copper. Uh, so, yeah, those seem to be my sh the things I, I'm, I'm short of. So I did build, I built another copper mine up here. This is using the the, the standard design. I've um, except that I've looped the uh, the ammunition belt in from around here, so it's all all running on green ammo, except that little bit in the bottom corner where there was some red left over apparently. Um, and that means you can tell which of the uh, turrets have actually been pulling their weight because the ones that get used quite a lot, as in do lots of shooting, uh, will use up all of their ammunition and switch over to green. Whereas the ones that don't do so much shooting tend to get stuck on re with red, um, uh, red, red ammunition in them. That said, it's not uh, there's not that much of a difference in the sort of, in the kill counts from those. So maybe, maybe I'm being a bit mean to the uh, to the red turrets. Maybe that maybe it was just the way they were the order they were built in by the uh, by the robot here. Um, but yeah, that's ticking over nicely. Got some copper coming out. I am having... I do notice I'm having more resource shortages than I, the, res, resource shortages than I was expecting. And I think that's partly because I got used to angel bobs, which is not so much... You don't use... You don't get through quite the same quantity of resources. There are a lot more different things and different processes and different things to build. So I'm not suggesting on any way, in any way it's remotely that it's at all simpler. Um, certainly not simpler, or even that it's easier, but you do seem to get through fewer big heaps of ore and things. The, the, sh the sh quantity of input stuff feels like it's lower. Whereas over here, I mean, uh, over here, I've got the the ore being poured in, turning into um, turning into copper plates, and it's going coming out as fast as it's going in. As you can see, there's a train on either side, and they're both loading and unloading merrily. So, yeah, it's um, it's going through when. I think I need to give it some time to settle down because I've only just built the, that uh, copper mine, so it, it will take a little while for it to get to the point where we know whether we've got enough or not. At the moment, it might just be filling things up again. This iron one is full. That's nice. The stone one is abysmal, I need to, and it's got some iron in it. What the hell is that iron doing there? I need to go and deal with that. For goodness sake. These, these filter inserters are supposed to stop that happening. Maybe it happened ages ago and I just never cleaned it up. I don't know. Um, iron for steel is uh, that's a bit weird. I should have built. I should have, maybe I should have built all of these with balancers because we've got quite a lot of iron ore. It's not. Is it requesting more? No, not yet. It's got quite a lot of iron ore stuck in these ones, and it's just not making its way through. So, yeah, basically. Uh, yeah. So things are looking mostly okay. I need to go and get more stone though. Right. What else have I been doing? Um, I told you all about the um, the defences along the along the top here, um, with all my um, uh, green stuff. Oh dear, this is getting worse. Uh, one issue I have run into, and this seems to have got significantly worse since I last looked. Oh, oh, this is gummed up. Right. Okay, I'm going to need to sort this out. So the problem I was having with with uh, with this with this area down here was that I was producing. I was using so much of the uranium 238 it to, to, to create the um, uh, armor-piercing, no, the um, depleted uranium ammunition, that none of it was getting through to produce to, to, to through to here in order to be turned into um, 
nuclear power uh, power cells to get passed along here, which is why this is running out. It hasn't quite gone cold. These two have probably gone cold. Oh no, they've got a little bit left. That one's got a little bit left in, that one hasn't. So these are running seriously low on, on fuel, so uh, I need to yeah, I need to go over and sort this out. Um, the problem is, as I say, there which came down to essentially there wasn't enough uranium ore being produced by this mine because it's it's just not big enough. It's not covering enough surface area. So whilst there's 300,000 uranium there, which is a decent amount because uranium goes quite a long way, it's not covering a big enough area and the mining productivity isn't high enough. So there's not actually that much uranium ore coming out. So there was only a trickle coming along here. Maybe a quarter of my um, centrifuges here were running. So there's a trickle of the uh, 238 coming along here. Some of it was making it through past the um, Coverex system. That, that was fine, getting to here. Um, but then it would, none of it was getting through past the, um, past the ammunition factory. So the, um, so the nuclear fuel over here was getting completely starved. And that's kind of the wrong way around. I think I might need to put in some sort of bypass because I feel like the nuclear fuel is probably a higher priority, really. Um, because that, given that's going to be what keeps the base powered. I think I'm also going to need to have these turn off if this belt is full. So maybe put in a, a read, read off the belt here and if that's completely full, or off these two, and if that belt's completely full, then turn all of these red inserters off. Um, and that will stop it producing more of the, um, of the light green stuff. So that would hopefully stop it backing up to quite the extent it has here. So those are a couple of fixes I can go in and do. In fact, let's do those on camera. Um, it's always nice to, to show what I'm doing, isn't it? And uh, give you an idea of how, how, how I how I play the game. Obviously, badly is the um, the one-word summary, but, you know, um, sometimes I manage to do things just a little bit. Shoot straight across the railway line without even looking, because that's the way I apparently roll. I mean, die. Yeah, I should stop talking so that I can, make, I can fast forward this bit. Okay, so... First things first, if I just grab a load of that, that'll get this moving again. Now, I was going to wire this up. Do I... Do I have it? I can't see any wires. First things, make some wires. Oh no, I've got a couple. Okay. Right, so I need to link up all of these red inserters first. And then I want to link them to over here. But I can't because my cables aren't long enough. <laughs> there we go. Let's cheese it a little bit. Jeez. And I want you to read belt contents. I don't want you to enable, disable, I want you to hold. So what we can do here with the um, with the circuits on circuits systems on the belts is when you when you attach a wire to a belt like that, you can do various things to it. You can turn the belt on and off using this control, and you can set why it does that, and that allows you to just to, to simply stop a belt if something is full or or if there's a, for any reason you want to stop it, you, you can use this to stop the belt running. Um, and, you can, and that will just simply block it. Or you can read what's on the belt and send that to the circuit network, which is also quite useful. And that's what I'm doing now. When you do that, you can either pulse. So each time an item goes through, you can send a ping to the circuit network. And that's quite useful if you want to trigger something every time something goes through. So, for example, sometimes you might you might use it to trigger a, um, a machine that builds a... Let me try that again. To trigger the inserter that takes a nuclear fuel out of the construction machine each time one gets used up, or, or something like that. Um, alternatively, you can have it set to hold, in which case it will read the contents of the belt and continuously output that. So if I copy that to the other ones, they're doing the same. You can now see that's outputting 16 across the two pieces of the belt, so we know that's full. I come along here, and I say I want this inserter to be enabled when the nuclear fuel, no, no the uranium-235 is less than 15, no, less than 60. So basically, if it's not full, run. I copy that to all of the other ones. You can also um, configure the stack size from the circuit, apparent, circuit network, apparently. That's interesting. I um, don't think I've ever used that. <clears throat> or you can read what the um, inserter is holding and send that out to the network if you want. So, there's, yeah, there's quite a lot you can do with the circuit network. Here, I'm, I'm doing some fairly simple stuff with it, so it's nothing too, uh, nothing too exciting at this point. Right, so now, because that belt is full, all of this is stopped. 
I'm going to get rid of this thing because it's stupid. <laughs> well, it wasn't stupid at the time because I needed a buffer, but now it's kind of stupid. So that will flood in a decent quantity of the um, 238. It's going to get gobbled up by all of my um, Ujimorts hits. Uh, ammunition creation, uh, builders. Is any, ah, but some of it's made it out the other side. Excellent. So that now comes round here, up here, where we can start making it into um, into nuclear fuel. Not nuclear fuel, what do you call these things? Uranium fuel cells. Okay. Nuclear fuel is what you put in trains um, when you want them to go really, really fast. <laughs> I should do that at some point. Okay, so now, as if by magic, we have some more uh, uranium fuel cells heading down out there. Back to where we're going to go around to... Uh, to be made into more delicious electricity. Thank goodness we've got that sorted. Now, that isn't actually a fix for this, because exactly the same problem is going to happen again. Uh, once this sort of build-up, backlog, that's a good word, backlog, goes, then we're going to start having the same problems again. In fact, we already are having similar problems. Let's take some of that. The system isn't working quite as well as I'd hoped, or rather, it's working too well. It's made so much of the 235 that now it's all gone a bit wrong. <laughs> Put some more of this in these machines. Uh, just to... I mean, this is going to be a very, very short-term fix. Because I'm going to have exactly the same problem again in a few minutes. And that's what... Yeah, this is gummed up again. So, that... Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not helping this at all. I don't know where I need to pull it out of to, to get it to make it better. Okay, but in theory, I think this probably means, and there's a decent amount of um, weasel words in there, I think once this gets running a bit more efficient, effectively, once we get through a bit more of the, um, a, bit, a few more uranium fuel cells created, then maybe we'll be okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prioritise them and the ammunition. Well, I'm not going to completely prioritise them. I'm just going to take a feed off like this. It's always a rock in the way, isn't it? And if I bring that round here, what I can do with this, let's take it through like that. Oh, I know how I know how I can do this. If I put this in like that, no, that won't, no, that won't make any difference. All right. So now we're going to bypass the ammunition with at least half of the um, two, three, mm, 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 mm. Uh, two, three, eight, the heavy one. So I can do that. Pull a load of this through. Now half of it is going round to the um, fuel cells, and the other, other the other half is going to the ammunition. So we get a bit of each coming out, and that seems it seems fair somehow, doesn't it? So this is what I meant about just not having enough coming through. You can see this one here. We're down to about that's about a third of them still running. Over here is a bit more because there was more belts worth of uranium to get through, but it's those should have the same amount being fed out onto each of them. They clearly, clearly don't. <laughs> what? I mean, not that it matters because it's all getting used up, but that's supposed to be a balancer. You're supposed to get the same amount coming out on each of them. That's the whole point of the thing. Oh well. Right, so we've got, um, yeah, there's a decent stream of this coming out now. Look over here. It's going to be using this. It's not even made it over here yet. It will eventually use it up, and hopefully everything will then start working and be all hunky-dory. And if you notice now, I'm getting a lot more power being generated by my um, turbines over here. So if we look at this, the yeah, the turbines are running full whack, because probably because it's night time, I guess. Uh, yeah, so the turbines are running full whack instead of the accumulators being discharged, and that's probably fair enough. Um, yeah, but the solar's coming back up again. Yeah, it's all, all, it all seems to be working reasonably well. Good. Um, okay. I think that'll do for this episode. I've got a few more things to talk about, but I've already been rambling for about 20 minutes, so I think I'm, I'm going to stop here, and, um, and then we'll see where, it, see where we go from there. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time when I've got some modules and suit stuff and other shenanigans and funny business to talk about. <laughs> I'll see you then.